In a previous tutorial, I talked about creating a company-wide approved calendar table in Dataflow that could be reused by many report creators. You can find the link here. This time, I would like to show you how to create a calendar template file that could provide more flexibility for more advanced report developers by keeping all the necessary fields and date structure in place. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe button so you wouldn't miss my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Let's say that you want to allow report developers to fine tune their calendar tables. I mean to either expand the time period or to limit to a certain number of years by keeping all the approved fields and structure, such as ISO week numbering or quarters split by a 454 week calendar. If you choose to go with the Dataflow option, they cannot really do that. A query or table coming from Dataflow is already ready to use as is. Almost. Technically speaking, users can limit the number of years by filtering out dates, but they won't be able to expand it. If flexibility is critical, your best option is to parameterize your M code used to create the calendar table and export it as a Power BI template file. Let's jump over to Power Query and I'll show you how to do it. I like to use parameters for date start and date end to add extra flexibility to template files. As you can see, the default values are 1st of January 2021 and 31st of December 2022. These are just dates for this example. I also use a calculation for the number of days between the end date and the start date. This is just a regular calculation and I have also converted the number to duration or days. All of this using the GUI of Power Query. When all of these are added, I can start building my M-based calendar table. The code I like to use is list.dates with my parameters. Then I convert this list to a table, update the name of the column to date, and lastly, change the data type to date. Now we have a full list of dates ranging from 1st of January 2021 till 31st of December 2022. Using the UI of Power Query, I can easily add extra columns such as year, quarter, month, month name, and other fields that I believe is going to be useful for our analysis. For this demo, I'm only going to add a few fields, but you are more than welcome to add as many as you like. Keep in mind, that the goal here is to create a company-wide approved calendar table so others won't need to create all of these fields. In other words, we are streamlining the report creation process. You can also create a financial calendar at this tab to help others to analyze data based on financial year and month. If you want to learn more about how to create dates or pick up the M code for a more detailed calendar table, please check out the Dataflow date table video and the associated blog post. I cover heaps more details in that one, Link is in the description below or at the top right corner. So we have the calendar table. Now it's time to export a file as a template. Instead of hitting file and save or save as, click on export and then Power BI template. I suggest giving a meaningful name to this template as the goal is to make this your company's standard calendar table in Power BI. Then this is going to create a file with a PBIT extension, a Power BI template file. You might ask the question why to create a template file when I could just save the query as a PBIX file and share that. I'm glad you asked. Adding parameters and saving it as a template file has two major benefits. Firstly, flexibility of fine-tuning the time period and secondly, reducing file sizes. Let's go back to my desktop so I can show you how. When I open the template file, I will be presented with a nice interface to adjust the start date and the end date. Remember, this option is only available when you use parameters. Here I can fine tune my start and end dates super quickly and once I click on load, Power BI will load 5 years instead of the 2 I used to create the template. The other reason why I like using templates is file sizing. The template file is roughly 10 kilobytes, while the PBIX file is 5 times larger. It may not seem to be a massive difference, but remember, I only have 5 years and a handful of fields in this query. Adding more columns, let's say financial dates, and expanding the time frame to 10, 15 or 20 years would show an even bigger difference in file sizes. 
Why is that? Because a template file contains report pages, visuals, model definitions and query definitions, but no data. A small file like this Power BI template can be shared via email or placed on a SharePoint site, let's say an internal Power BI user group site. Whether you create a standard, organization-wide approved and promoted calendar table using data flows or a template file, you will help others to streamline the whole report development process. Personally, I like to utilize both solutions as both have their benefits and compromises, and I think they are geared towards two different audiences. Data flow date tables target audiences, citizen developers who just want to get the data that's available, while a template calendar table is aimed at more advanced report developers who just want to adjust bits and pieces in their reports. But the question is, what do you think about this solution? Have you ever created a calendar template file in Power BI? If not, would you be interested in creating one after watching this tutorial? Let me know all of these in the comments below, along with any other questions that you might have about this topic. As you stay till the end, I'm sure you like this video, so please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to watch more of my tutorials, like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.